Hello and welcome back to Complex Analysis. And first, many many thanks to all the nice people that support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Please don't forget, as a supporter you get a PDF version and a quiz for this video. Now today's part 9 will be about power series. Indeed, this is a very important topic in a complex analysis course. In the case you have watched my real analysis course, you already know a lot about power series. Now it turns out, for this concept, in the complex numbers we can do exactly the same as in the real numbers. Moreover, by working with complex numbers, we will find the true nature of the behavior of some power series. Hence, you need to work in the complex realm to understand power series completely. And why this is important, I can immediately show you with an example. Namely, one of the most important functions is given by a power series. This is the exponential function denoted by exp of z. And now you know, the value of the function is defined by an infinite sum. There we have z to the power k divided by k factorial. Now, this definition you should know for real numbers. But then we don't have any problems also putting complex numbers into the formula. Of course, then in general, the outcome is also a complex number. Here, please don't forget, the symbol infinity means there is a limit involved. This means we have a limit of complex numbers and because you know how to measure distances in the complex plane, you don't have any problems with this. Regarding this, there is simply not much difference to the real counterpart. Now with this philosophy, we can also talk about the general definition of a power series in the complex field. In other words, if you know the definition for real numbers, you know exactly what comes now. Of course, the starting point should be the coefficients we have in the infinite series and are now complex numbers. And the fitting name is just a0, a1, a2 and so on. Ok, then for these numbers we can define a complex function we can call f. Moreover, the domain we call d, so we have a function from d into c. Then this map is defined by sending z to the infinite series of the coefficient a k times z to the power k. However, since later it will be important that we can shift the whole function by a fixed number z0, I already introduce it here. So we simply have z minus z0 to the power k. And I can already tell you, this z0 is often called the expansion point. Of course, what is still missing here is the explicit definition of the domain d. However, you might already know this, because here in the definition of the map there is a limit involved. And maybe this limit does not exist for all complex numbers that we can choose. Hence, this restriction is now what we have to put into the definition of d. So we can say we have all the complex numbers set where this limit exists. Or in other words, we simply say the series is convergent. Ok, then you see we have a well defined function, maybe the domain is very small, but still, we always call this function a power series. With this knowledge, I would say we look at an example. This is an important one and you already know it from real analysis. It's the famous geometric series. It's not complicated at all, because all coefficients are just one. Therefore, we have the series that starts with k is equal to zero of z to the power k. Now, in fact, by using exactly the same proof as in real analysis, we can show that this series has the value 1 divided by 1 minus z. However, you might already know, this proof only works if the absolute value of z is less than 1. Indeed, if the absolute value of z is greater or equal than 1, then this series does not converge. In other words, the domain d here is the ball around 0 with radius 1. And this is such an important fact that you really should remember it, because we can use it a lot in future. 
Moreover, please recall the notation we use for the epsilon ball. So it's the open ball, so we call it B. And the radius is 1, so we have an index 1. And the middle point is just 0. Okay, so what you see here in the complex plane, we have a circle and inside we have convergence and outside we have divergence. Now it turns out that for any power series, this situation is not essentially more difficult. Indeed, the following fact follows from the geometric series. It simply tells us that for a given power series, there is a maximal radius r for this circle here. Or to say it more concretely, the open ball with radius r lies completely in D. So you see, the only difference from before is that we don't need equality and also the middle point should be z0 now. So here you see, the worst case for r would be to be 0, which means there's only one point in D, z0. And the best case scenario would be that r is infinity, which means D is just the whole complex plane. So by using formulas, we would write r comes from the interval 0 to infinity. However, also infinity should be included as a symbol. Therefore, to be precise, we would distinguish two cases here. Of course, I told you before, the second case is just that D is the whole complex plane. This is the best case, because there the power series converges everywhere. In the other case, please note that we know that somewhere on the boundary or outside of the ball we have divergence. Indeed, because this R is chosen maximally, the result is that everywhere outside we have divergence. Therefore, the general picture looks like this. In the complex plane, we have this ball with z0 in the middle and with radius r. And in the inside of this ball, convergence is guaranteed. Moreover, in the outside of this ball, divergence is guaranteed. The only thing we don't know in general is what happens at the boundary. Indeed, depending on the power series, different things could happen there. For example, for the geometric series, the boundary was completely divergent as well. However, for a different power series, you could have convergence or both cases mixed. Okay, then let's state the divergence part here also with a formula. Now, the outside in this complex plane here could be described as this set difference. So it simply means that z is not an element of this ball. However, then the boundary would be included, so we have to exclude this as well. We can simply do this by taking the closure of this ball. So this notation simply means this is the set including the boundary. So in this case, it's not the open ball, it's the closed ball. Now for points that are not in this closed ball, we know that the power series here is divergent. So in summary, you should see this here is a very nice result we can use a lot when we deal with power series. Indeed, it's not hard to prove. We can just use the root criterion from real analysis and combine it with the geometric series here. Okay, if you are interested in seeing this proof, please let me know in the comments. Now, for the end here, I can tell you, often it's sufficient to know that there exists such an R but sometimes it would be nice to have an explicit formula for it. Then we would be able to calculate this value of r. Probably you already know this formula, it's often called the Cauchy-Adama theorem. In fact, this is what we have discussed in my real analysis course in part 33. And it tells you that 1 divided by r can be calculated by a limb soup. Namely, we look at the coefficients a k in the absolute value and then we take the kth root of this real number. Then we take the limb soup k to infinity and we know this always exists. It's either a real number between 0 and infinity or the symbol infinity. And then simply the inverse of this number gives us our maximal r. There of course you should know Inverses with 0 and infinity are here defined by this formula. Hence, 
the best case scenario is if this limb soup is zero. Okay, the last important thing I should tell you is that this maximal R is often called the radius of convergence for the power series. And I would say it's a good exercise for you to calculate the radius of convergence for the exponential function from above. Okay, then I hope I see you next time when we start talking about the uniform convergence. So have a nice day and see you there. Bye.